Hello everyone, this is a small tutorial to show you how to uh, create a small 4 inch by 2 inch by 3 8 inch thick acrylic plaque that you can run on our new little mini CNC desktop mills. Uh, these mills will be uh, in one of the labs in the EC building where you can access it. There will be instructions for how to gain access to using it. Uh, along with a tutorial on how to use that CNC mill, the do's and the don'ts, and uh, there should be hopefully even someone in the lab that can assist you if needed. But as far as the template goes to create your plaque, it's exactly the same as the project that you did when you did the card holder, but in this case we're going to do it from scratch just so you can see how it gets done so you can do it on your own. So here I've opened up Mastercam. You already know how to run Mastercam. If you don't you have to go back through the videos and where to download it, how to set it up, and how to use it. But if you're familiar with Mastercam we'll proceed from that point and uh, we'll get started by creating the actual plaque. So on the screen here I have the axis lines and remember there's a shortcut key called the F9 key that you can use to toggle those axis lines off or on. I'm going to turn them on right now and I'm going to go to wireframe and we're going to go to rectangle. We're going to hover our mouse right over the axis line and drag out a rectangle. We're going to click it. Remember when the rectangle or any geometry is in this bluish color it is live and we can make changes to it. So over here on the left side of the screen I'm going to make it four inches across and because we drug in the negative direction we're going to make it minus two. Press enter, say OK up here and we now have our box. I'm going to right click, I'm going to say fit to the screen, another shortcut is Alt F1 but now we have our size of our stock and let's just say for we wanted to make a little plaque. We wanted to again do uh, a name and a graphic, maybe even a border. So I'm going to come in over here to where it says create letters. I'm going to use the drop down to go to the master cam block font. I like the block font. Put in my name. And I'm going to reduce the screen. I'm rolling my middle mouse button right now so that I can see everything and I'm going to place that. So I'm just going to click the reselect button so it becomes live. I'm going to put it right about up here and of course it's way too big so we're going to go and change our height on the left side here to maybe 0.3 and uh, then I'll click the reselect button again and I'll put it right up here in the corner. So now I want to add a graphic. So I'm going to go to I'm going to say OK to accept that. So now it's hard geometry and it can't be changed. You can move it dynamically and you can delete it, but you can't. It's no longer live, so you can't set the height unless you go through the scaling and the transformation menus, which are up here. All right, let's jump into Google here. I like horses, so I'm going to look for horses. And uh, I'm going to go to horse maybe... I'll say vector file, or you can type in silhouettes. Let's go to images, see what kind of comes up here. All right, so we all have all these little different horses that are right here. I kind of like this horse here. And so if you remember from the first video, you want to bring in geometry that is not colored because Mastercam is going to take this from a roster image to a vector image, which means it's going to go from a, a standard picture to something that is a machinable file. And in order for Mastercam to produce the best possible result, you're going to want to get something that's black and white and as large as you can get it. Uh, if you go with something that is small as far as the pixel size goes, you're going to end up getting something that's going to come out subpar. If you go to Tools here in Google, you can set the size, you know, so that you can look for something that's large. You can also set the color to be black and white, right? And uh, you can set some other parameters here, and it'll help filter down what you're looking for. But I like this particular horse here, and I actually saved it already to the desktop. Uh, but to do that again, you would just right-click, and you can save the image as. Make sure it's a JPEG or a PNG, 
or a BMP, something that Mastercam will recognize. Okay, so I'm going to come back out of Google here, and I want to bring this graphic in, but if you remember uh, from our previous lessons, we're going to go to Levels, and we want to create a new level. I want to create a new Level 2, and on that Level 2, I'm going to put in the word Graphic, which is for a label, so that I have a new... Whoops, I have two capitals there. Let's get that back to lowercase, not that it matters, but we'll spell it correctly. Graphic. There we go. All right, so uh, make sure that the check mark is on that level. Remember, these X's we can turn off and on the visual of that particular level. I want to bring the graphic in, so I want to make sure that the check mark is on level two, and I'm going to turn off level one. Again, in the wireframe menu, we're going to go to where it says raster to vector. It's asking us if we want to merge the geometry with the current geometry. We're going to say yes. And already on my desktop, I have this horse file that I saved, so I'm going to bring it in. This on the left-hand side is what your, your file picture looks like. This is the way Mastercam sees it. You can make adjustments by dragging this little threshold arrow, and you notice it's getting darker and darker, and sometimes it might put too many darks in there, and it may not um, turn into a vector file correctly. If we go to the left, you can see that you're going to get less and less. Usually Mastercam is pretty good at picking the right balance here, back here in the middle. Now this probably won't come out perfect because you can kind of see that it was kind of a low resolution drawing. But we're going to go with it anyway because remember this is a tiny plaque and so some of the uh, smaller uh, parts of this that may not be perfectly clear is not going to really be seen because of the size of the graphic on the physical on the physical plaque. Uh, you won't see some of those little errors. So I'm going to say OK. I'm going to make sure that it says that we want to create the outline. I also want to make sure that it's app optimized for a spline fit. And I'm going to say OK. So Mastercam is going to think about it for a minute. And it's going to try to vectorize this graphic. So we'll give it a few seconds here to think about it. And there it is. You can kind of see right along here the lines aren't perfect. It did pretty good though. It did pretty good. It could have been better, but this is what I was talking about. You kind of see how this image is not a sharp line, and that's because I picked an image that wasn't, you know, ideal as far as its clarity and the size of its pixels. But I'm going to use it anyway because you're going to see that as small as we're going to make this graphic, it's not going to matter much. So if I say OK on the left here, and by the way, if you don't like it, you would just X out of that. So uh, in this case, I'm going to say accept it. So I'm going to say yes. And you can see it's not bad. You can still see that it's a horse. Let's see what size it is in comparison to our actual plaque. So I'm going to turn the plaque on. And you can kind of see it was a small image. It's almost too small. So I'm going to grab this image here. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to just put a box around it. Remember when you're selecting things in Mastercam, Everything that's inside the box is what gets selected. So even though I crossed this line here when I made my box, it didn't select it because part of the line was outside the box. I'm now going to go into Transform. I'm going to go into Dynamic. And I'm going to place my gnomon right there on the origin of that graphic. And then I'm going to make sure that on the left side of the screen that we have it set to Move, not Copy. I'm going to click and drag this where I want this to be. I'm going to put it right about here. Make sure you click again to place it. And if you just X out of this box, it's going to put it right back where it was. You have to say OK. So click OK. Now that graphic is where I want it to be. I also want to make it slightly larger. So I'm going to select this graphic again. I'm going to go into Transform here at the top. I'm going to pick the Scale function. Again, I'm not going to copy it. I want to move it. And I'm just going to bump up the scale. So I'm just going to bump the arrows up here a little bit till I get the size that I want. That looks good to me. I'm going to say OK. Now, to make this color go back to the original color that it was, this color is a transformation color called a result. So anytime you use the transform functions and you move a piece of geometry, copy it, scale it, whatever you do to it, it turns it into a result color. And that's so that you can pick groups of 
of uh, components, geometry, as a result and do something different with it rather than having to reselect everything again. All right, so just right click on the screen somewhere and this little icon here that says clear colors will clear the colors back to its original. One other thing I want to add is I want to add a border. So I'm going to go back to wireframe, back to rectangle, and I'm going to create a little border that goes around this plaque. And I'm just going to do this by eye. I don't, it doesn't have to be perfect, but I'm going to just kind of size it like so. Click it again and say OK. I'd like to round the corners of this border. So I'm going to go on the top here where it says fillet corners. I'm going to change the size from 250 to 0.15. And I'm going to go ahead and click the lines where I want these fillets to be. And remember to hit OK when you're done. All right, so this is going to be my plaque now. We're ready to do some final machining. Pretty simple. We're going to go into the Toolpaths tab at the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. And you're going to go to the machines. And I'm going to have this already set up for you. I'll, I'll have a machine already here for you. So you shouldn't have to do this op, or this, this op that I'm about to do now. I'm going to click Machines. I have several machines in my queue here. I'm going to pick the machine that we're using, which is the GRBL uh, machine, which is the controller that we use for these little mini desktops. And um, it's asking me here, what post do I want to use with that particular type of machine? So I'll set all that stuff up for you guys later. So we'll just put that right there. All right, so you'll have this, all right? Now you just right click in the white area on the left, do a mill tool path. We're going to do a contour. We're going to use the window function. So I'm going to say window. And I want to start clicking from here and make a window around everything that I want to machine. Remember not to choose anything from the outside per, um, periphery of the size of the plaque. We don't want to machine that because that's the physical size of stock. Click again and notice it's prompting me here to sketch the approximate start point. So I'm going to pick right here and you're going to see a bunch of arrows and everything light up yellow. We don't want the outer border lit up. We just want the part we want to engrave there. I'm going to say that's what we want. We're going to say OK. Our menu pops up here for setting up our tool. We're going to go into our tool library. We're going to be using a 1 16th ball end mill. Remember if the ball end mills aren't shown here you can go to filter and you can choose what filter or what type of end mill you want to see. If I say none, it won't show me anything. All it's going to turn everyone on. It's going to be very hard to find. So I always say none. I look for the spherical end mill filter and I say OK. And that just filters out the ball end mills that I have. We're going to pick the 1 16th, say OK. Let's call this tool 1. Right? So you hit 1, press your tab button so that it populates 1 here on the length offset and the diameter. Change your RPM to about 5,000 RPM. Change your feed rate to about 10 inches a minute. Next, uh, you can even do 12 inches if you want to. Your plunge rate, we want to slow that down a little bit, so we're going to change that to 5. You can add a comment here if you want to, and now we're going to go to cut parameters. In our cut parameters, we do not want to use cutter compensation. We learned about that earlier. We want to drive that cutter right down the center. So we're going to click on this drop down here. We're going to turn that off so that our graphic shows us that the cutter is running right down the middle. Make sure your stock is set to zero. And then for depth of cuts, notice these are all turned off. We want to make sure that they are off. For instance, if this is on, that means this check mark is on. That means it's going to do multiple depths of cut. For this particular exercise, we don't need it, so make sure that's turned off. Notice the lead in and lead out is turned on, and we use that when we are using cutter comp. We're not using cutter comp for this example, so we're going to turn that off. So you basically want one, two, three, four, five of these in the cut parameters all turned off. The only thing you need to set is your linking parameters. First, you want to make sure that everything is set to absolute. If it's not set to absolute, make sure you click the radio button to put it at absolute. For your clearance plane, this mini mill has very small clearance, so you just want to set that to 0.5. Set your retract plane to 0.2. Your feed plane to 0.1 is OK. Top of stock 0. And the depth that we're going is going to be a negative 0.01. That's it. So remember, negative 0 0.01. Watch where you put that decimal point. If coolant is turned on, 
we're going to make sure that we turn it off, right? We, we want to ignore any kind of cooling. And then we're going to just say OK. So if you want to watch your part run, there's two ways we're going to do that. Again, you're going to click on your tool path here on the left. And you can push down your middle mouse wheel, tilt backwards as you're holding it down. You'll see the cutter. And then you can click the play button up here on the top. And you can see it start machining your part. You can speed that up here. You can also grab the cursor here and just drag it if you want to just go through quicker. Um, all of these little green moves are where the cutter's popping up and moving to the next letter or piece of geometry. But to see this actually even better, I'm going to right click, go back to my top view. I'm going to say OK here to turn that off. And we're going to set up our stock just like we did in previous videos. We're going to go over here on the left to properties. We're going to click on plus to open up the drop downs, go to our stock setup. We're going to choose select the corners. We're going to pick the upper left hand corner of our part. We're going to pick our lower right hand corner of our part. It auto fills in the sizes and X and Y for us. We just need to add our thickness of 0.375 and then click the OK button. Now that stock has been generated, we can now use this function on the left here called Verify Selected Operations. When we click that, it's going to open up a new window. That new window is shown here. I'm going to tilt it with my mouse wheel, go back to fit. Remember, you can also hold down the shift key, push down your middle mouse wheel, and that's your pan. Let's turn off the wireframe. Whoops, we just lost it there. Let's go back to that screen. It just popped in the back. Uh, we're going to turn off the wireframe. Go to Tool Components here and turn off the holder. That way, you're only just looking at the cutter itself. Right? So again, I'm just going to push down my middle mouse wheel and get it in, a, in an orientation that I like. This will happen really fast, so I'm going to drag this speed button here just a little bit slower, and then I'm just going to click play. And you'll see it's going to do all the engraving. And then it'll finish with the border. Now what you want to look for here is that the depth that you told it to go is only going in about 10 thousandths deep. If it looks like it's going a lot deeper, obviously you need to go back to the parameters and you need to check it to make sure that you put in the right depth. So parameters, and you go to your linking parameters and make sure that this is set to negative uh, 0.01. I'm going to X out of this because mine was set properly. When you're all done with that, what you want to do is do the file save as. Save that file wherever you want to save it. And then you're going to email that file to me once I see it, because you're, you're using the HLE version of Mastercam, the Home Learning Edition, so it won't allow you to post the G-code. This G-code posting button right here is grayed out, and it won't work. So you'll email the file to me. I'll look at it, make sure that it's right. I'll make the G-code for you, and I'll email back to you the G-code file. You'll put that on a flash drive or a small SD card and you will take it to the lab after you make an appointment to go there and you'll go ahead and run your plaque. And that's really all there is to this. So this is identical to the card holder program. You're just making something a little bit smaller. And uh, what you'll end up seeing in your template is, I'll delete this guy here to get rid of the toolpath. You'll just see this. I'll have the machine already set up for you, and then you just need to right click to create your toolpath. And that's it. So, thanks for watching, and uh, I hope you actually take advantage of making this little part because the little CNC machines are cute. Um, you can buy them as cheap as $150. They come in a kit. You can put them together in about an hour or so. Uh, very easy. They're actually well built. Uh, I bought ours on Amazon for $215. Uh, because they came with like a toolkit and everything else, but I found them on eBay and other places for $150, and they're nice to have. You can get them with a little laser head, or in this case, it's like a little mill router. So it's good for engraving uh, soft metals like brass and aluminum and, and hard plastics. You can also mill with it, too. Uh, you can change the cutter out and do milling. You just got to do it with very light cuts, very light depth of cuts. Uh, so that you don't destroy the mill. It's not all that strong. All right, so um, thank you for watching, and uh, good luck.